Good morning. Welcome to St. Juan Diego Catholic Church. I hope we are all having a wonderful morning so far. So let's begin by standing up. Let's sing some songs to get warmed up and invite the spirit in, okay? This first song is a song called Trading My Sorrows. It's kind of an older song, but hopefully we all know it. It's not that hard. The refrain goes like this. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Let's do that again. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, here we go. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, we say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure, that His joy is gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last through the night, His joy comes in the morning. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. One more time. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Does anyone know a song called Lord I Lift Your Name on High? So actually, this is a song and we're gonna go through some hand motions for it. So the hand motions on this go like this. So the chorus goes, You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. So if you're able to do hand motions, which I think everyone is, uh, so the hand motions are, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. Yeah, just like that, just like if you were looking for land, you know, uh, uh, ahoy there, right? So you came from heaven to earth to show the way. So you came from heaven up top and then to earth 
down low, to show the way. And then from the earth, so down low again, to the cross, we put our hands out, right? My debt to pay. So just like that. So if you were, give, you were gonna pay someone or give someone money, right? My debt to pay. So again, so from heaven to earth to show the way, and then from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, right? And then uh, the next line, from the cross to the grave, and then we just put our hands down, and then from the grave to the sky, we put our hands all the way up, and then, Lord, I lift your name on high, just if we were going to, like, lift something up, if we were lifting weight. So let's do that again. And this time, we'll, I'll sing along with you. So you guys do the hand motions, and I'll sing the refrain, okay? So you came. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high that was perfect lord i lift your name on high lord i love to sing your praises i'm so glad you're in my life i'm so glad you came to save us here we go here we go you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. That was awesome. Let's do that again. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. So uh, as we're here today, one thing that we want to keep in mind, right, is that we want, we rely on God as our strength, correct? We rely on the Lord to, to guide us. And so because of that, our lives are in service to God. And so there's a song that really embodies that. I, I think would be really good to keep stuff in mind, okay? It's a song called, We Will Serve the Lord. goes like this as for me and my house we will serve the Lord we will serve the Lord we will serve the Lord as for me and my house we will serve the Lord we will serve the Lord we will serve the if you know it. Wealth can be an idol built of gleaming gold, bringing dreams of paradise, futures bought and sold. Some will choose to gather it, all that they can hoard. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve Until at 
keeps them bored. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve. something like this.
You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to St. Juan Diego. Thank you for being here today. Before we begin, for those of you that are not familiar with the church building, um, restrooms are past the narthex um, in the northwest corner of the building. Um, and the first classroom um, on your right as you're walking to the restroom has, um, we have little fruit and nut bars and water if you're hungry or thirsty and want to grab one. Um, we will be doing um, a, a little maybe 10 minute break in between, okay? Let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and the great gift of Maria Vadia to us. As we gather in your name, Lord, we ask you to rain down your Holy Spirit on us so our minds and our hearts may be open to receiving what you have to give us through Maria. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, we need thee. Come, sweet Spirit, we pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own gentle way. Our pastor, Father Dan, is on vacation right now, so he couldn't be here. Um, on his behalf, I feel honored to introduce to you Maria Vadia. Maria is mother to four grown children and grandmother to seven. She was born in Havana, Cuba, and was 10 years old when she and her family fled to Miami to escape the communist regime in her native country. She attended Catholic schools and was, a Sunday Catholic, and was a Sunday Catholic with no personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Later, married to a wealthy man, she was gripped with materialism. Yet in the midst of everything that the world had to offer, she knew that something was missing. Maria was baptized in the Holy Spirit in 1987 and consecrated her life to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the preaching of the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit. In spite of great adversity, the Lord has been with her like a mighty warrior. It is her desire to see the Catholic Church restored to the beauty of the Bride of Christ with miracles, signs, and wonders. Maria and her team have been helping God's people enter into deeper worship and experience the glory of God. Her foundation, the glory of God, led by the Holy Spirit, is helping build houses for the pygmies in Kabali, Uganda. Together with Father Tom DiLorenzo, she sponsors the School of the Holy Spirit and Days of Glory conferences. Maria is the founder and chairman of the House of the Glory House of Miami, which came into being in obedience to the dream the Lord gave her to care for survivors of sex trafficking. Maria is committed to making Jesus known to the nations by the preaching of the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit. She has been active in the Catholic charismatic renewal of the Archdiocese of Miami, has spoken at many conferences, and traveled extensively around the world to numerous nations, bringing a message of faith, salvation, and healing. Maria has authored seven books. Her books are available for sale in the Narthex. 
We are blessed to have Maria with us today. Please put your hands together to, to welcome Maria Vadia. <clears throat> Can we have another song for the Holy Spirit? <laughs> uh, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Do you know that one? Everybody can get up and he's our beautiful helper. He reveals Jesus to us. One of the things he, that he does. Come flood this place and fill the 
Come on, everybody, just open your hearts to the Lord. In your own words, just tell Him that you are hungry for Him, that you want to experience His presence, that you want to experience His glory, the goodness of His glory, right here in this place. How hungry are you for God? How hungry are you for the Holy Spirit? Open up your arms. Open up, open up. This is a sign of humility. This is a sign of, of you wanting more from God, of being open. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us to overflowing this morning, Lord. Fill our hearts with your love. Romans 5.5. 5. Let the Spirit of the Lord just fill our hearts with his love. Change us, O God. Transform us, O God. Open the eyes of our heart. Jesus, we want to know you. We want to know you. We want to know you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and reveal the real Jesus to us. We want to know you, Lord. We want to fall in love with you, Jesus. You're so beautiful, so wonderful. So amazing. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Nothing the world has to offer compares to you, Lord. Nothing that the world has to offer compares to knowing you. We want to fall in love with you. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal Jesus to us. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Come with power, Holy Spirit. Come with wisdom. Come with revelation. Start healing your people right here, right now, Lord. Let there be a mighty demonstration of who you are. Let there be a mighty display of your power, of your presence in this place. That you are more than able to heal us. You are more than able to set us free. You are more than able to break every chain of addiction in this room. Holy Spirit, you're the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You dwell inside of us. Let the rivers of living water start flowing from deep within us. Let the rivers flow. Jesus said, Romans, uh, John 8, verse 38, those who believe in me, out of their innermost being will flow rivers of living water. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. Let your rivers flow, Lord. And everywhere that the rivers go, there is life, there is healing, there is restoration, there is joy, there is transformation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the amazing redemption that you have given to us. This morning, Lord, expose every lie that the enemy has been speaking to us. Spoke every area of deception. Set us free this morning. You say, Jesus, in your word, in John 8, 32, when you come to know the truth, the truth will set us free. Expose every lie. You came to bring life and life more abundant. We are the people that you have chosen. There is a plan and a purpose, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way in our lives. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. If you have your prayer language, start using it. Oh, 
The Lord is already healing people. People that have problems with their immune system. Problems with immune system. These are words of knowledge. And what the Lord reveals, He heals. Amen? So if that's you, just show some faith. Lift up your arms and say, this is for me. Amen? If you have any problems with your immune system, just raise your hand. Say, I receive my healing right now, right here in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everywhere that Jesus went, He healed people. Everywhere He went, He healed people. The Lord is healing immune system, fibromyalgia, lupus, whatever it is that is attacking your immune system. Start receiving your healing. Thank you, Lord. The Lord honors our faith. Hebrews 11:6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? So we want to show some faith. If the word of knowledge applies to you, just lift up your hands and... Tell the Lord, I receive it, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. And if you know any person suffering from whatever I'm saying, you can, and the person is not here, you can claim that healing for them. They could be in China, okay? That, there's no problem of space and time with the Holy Spirit. It's about you and, and using, releasing your faith. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I believe the Lord is healing somebody's liver. I see liver damage. So anybody with liver damage, any problems with the liver, just start receiving your healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. By the wounds of Jesus, you have been healed. We have been healed. On the cross, Jesus carried every sickness, every disease. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. I see somebody a female suffering from a problem with their ovaries. Problems with the ovaries. If you know anybody with that issue, just receive that healing for you or for that person. Thank you, Lord. Ovaries are being healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see uh, there's people here that you have problems with your memory your memory. Put your hands on your head and receive the healing of your memory. And I just decree and I declare that your memory is being activated. It's being healed. It's being restored in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will not forget anything else. That forgetfulness is, is being kicked out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will be able to concentrate. That you will be able to remember that you, you will not forget things anymore or truth that you have received from the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, that we have the mind of Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you're healing our minds. You're healing our memories. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord God. Breathing problems. The Lord is healing breathing problems. Asthma, allergies, anything that has to do with breathing. Take a deep breath. Your breathing should be much better in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Also, the Lord, um, there's people here with hair loss, hair loss. Some people are losing their hair. You are upset. And the Lord cares about everything, about everything in your life. So he's healing our hair, okay? In Jesus' name, by the wounds of Jesus, you are healed. Your hair is becoming strong, growing nicely, strong in Jesus' name. No more loss of hair in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. The Lord is healing hearts, things like arrhythmia, rapid heartbeat, things, anything uh, that has to do with your heart, uh, clogged arteries in your heart, anything that has to do with heart issues. The Lord is healing hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is setting people free from depression. No more depression in Jesus' name. We come against that spirit of depression, that lying spirit. We bind you and we command you to leave this place in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let the oil of gladness 
be poured upon you right now. Open up, open up, and receive that joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We give you glory. Pains are being lifted up. Pains are being lifted up. Neck pains, shoulder pains, back pains, lower back, all kinds of pains, hip pains, knee pains, ankle pains, carpal tunnel syndrome, pain in that area. The Lord is healing you. Thank you, Lord. If you have pain, just start receiving your healing. Don't remain passive. We want to break with the passivity in the Catholic Church. Amen. We want to break that passivity in Jesus' mighty name. We are not meant to be passive. Faith without works is dead. There's a lot of ministry that is needed in, this, in the nations. Amen. And God's people are the ones, sons and daughters, are the ones that are supposed to be proclaiming the gospel, healing the sick, Casting out demons, ra raising the dead. Amen? This is normal Catholic uh, Christian living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Every bit of pain, leave your bodies. Go to the feet of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a mighty shout. One, two, three. Yay! Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you know, it's biblical to shout unto the Lord. More than 40 times it says to do it in the Bible. Amen. We were taught to be very quiet and nice, and that gets you nowhere, okay? We, we need to be in the spirit. We need to be aggressive. Because there's an enemy that has already been defeated by the blood of Jesus. But we are the ones that enforce the victory over the enemy because he's alive, defeated, but he's alive until Jesus comes back a second time. Until Jesus comes back a second time, you and I, we have the authority to step over the enemy. But you know, most Catholics are like this. Do something, God. He has already given us. His delegated authority. He has already given us dominion. He has already given us the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. He has already given us the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. We have already been blessed by every spiritual blessing. We have everything. We are supposed to walk like Jesus walked. Amen? Amen. We got to believe it. We got to believe it. John 14, verse 12 Jesus says, those who believe in me, the same works I've been doing, you will do, and even greater works. Hallelujah. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So let's give the Lord another shout. One, two, three. Whoa! Amen, amen. Check your bodies and see how you're doing. You probably are feeling better now. Take a deep breath. You know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen? We cannot leave this church in the same way, in the same condition in which we came in. Because when, when, wherever the Holy Spirit is, He's moving. He's setting you free. He's healing you. He's giving revelation. He's doing whatever He wants to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we may be seated. Hallelujah. Let me get my glasses just in case. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And this is the Apostle Paul when he went to Corinth. And we ask the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the Bible, to speak to us. You are the teacher. You are the spirit of revelation. Speak to our hearts, Lord. And give us revelation today and change our lives. So I'm starting in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ 
and him crucified. Verse 4, and my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Amen? In, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 20, Paul says that the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. So what is Paul saying? That the people of God need to demonstrate the kingdom. Amen? It's not just words. We need to demonstrate how the healing of the sick, the setting the, the captives free. Amen? Raising the dead. We need to demonstrate the power of the kingdom by releasing prophetic words, by releasing words of knowledge. Because the kingdom of God does not consist of words, but in demonstration. Amen? And Paul is saying, don't even, don't even take a, don't even make such a big deal of the words that I use. It's not about my, it's not about the wisdom of men. It's about demonstrating the reality of the kingdom of God. Amen? So it's not, what, what am I trying to say? It's not about, oh, what a beautiful talk. No. Was there a demonstration? Were people getting healed? Were people being set free? Were people's minds being changed? Amen? See, we Catholics, we need to come alive. Amen? We are a church of pew potatoes. That's not what the Christian life is about. The Christian life is about going everywhere and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Matthew 10, 7 and 8. And as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. In other words, demonstrate, show that Jesus is alive. Amen? The world needs to see the real Jesus. Amen? People need to have an encounter with the real God. Hallelujah. And Paul is saying, this power flows from the cross. Amen? So the cross of Jesus Christ has to become real to us. Amen? Because as Catholics, sometimes we, we grow up looking at crucifixes everywhere, you know, in the school, in the church, in the homes, we become desensitized to what Jesus did for us at the cross, and we never go deeper. But this morning, I want to take you to the cross and share with you seven amazing things that Jesus has done for us, because this is part of our inheritance, amen? This is part of, of what we are supposed to be walking in, hallelujah. But all this comes through revelation. We need to have a renewed mind. And how do we renew our minds? Uh, Romans 12, 2, Paul says, Do not be conformed to the world any longer, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Okay? Because when we come to Jesus, when we have an encounter with Jesus, and we realize, oh, I need to be saved, I need to be forgiven, you encounter him, you come to the Lord, you repent, you ask for forgiveness, you invite him as Lord and Savior. That's just the beginning of your new life. Most people stay stuck there, and we come to the Lord broken. We come to the Lord full of lies and deceptions. Amen? But it's our job to start getting our minds renewed so that every lie, every deception is dealt with, substituted with the truth. And the truth will set us free. Amen? It's as simple as that. But most people don't get into the Word of God. Most church people. I don't know. This, this must be a demonic assignment on us, on us Catholics. They don't, we don't read. I do. But most Catholics don't read the Word of God. Now they read a thousand other books. You know what I'm saying? Instead of feeding from the real thing. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Amen? So, so we are supposed to go about evangelizing, 
setting the captives free, demonstrating. But if we do not know what Jesus has done for us on the cross, what are we supposed to tell people? Amen? If we're not excited about Jesus, about what he has done, about the good news, what are we going to share with people? Amen? Listen, why are most Catholics not evangelizing? Why? When Jesus, it's very clear what the Lord wants. It's in the Word. It's in black and white. Mark 16, starting in verse 15, go and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Why are most Catholics, over 90%, I would say, they don't do this. Why? You got to, you know, you got to ask yourself, why am I not doing it? Why am I not doing what the Lord has asked of me? Amen? What are your excuses? There are no excuses. So, you know, some of you are looking at me. Why did I come this morning to this place? But you know what? The Lord loves you. The Lord has a plan for your life. The Lord wants to partner with you. Amen? We are his body on earth. Look at the nations. <laughs> I don't need to convince anybody that the nations are a mess. Amen? But part of the reason America is a mess today is because the church... Believers, we have been complacent, lukewarm, passive, because we are the ones that are called to be the light and the salt of the earth. We are the ones that change the nations and change the culture. But the church has been like this. Just, oh, I have a problem. Get over it. Who has, everybody has problems, amen? Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God. First, the kingdom of God, everything else will be added on. Amen. That's the way it is. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to start, you know, with, with, with the first of seven things that I want to share with you today. And um, the first one is found in 2 Corinthians 5.21, that the Bible says that he, he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we could be made the righteousness of God. On the cross, Jesus, the King of glory, the beautiful Son of God, the one that never sinned, on the cross, Jesus became sin for us so that we could be made right with God. Amen? Think of this. Think of Jesus becoming sin. Sin is ugly. Sin is horrible. Jesus became something horrible on that cross. He became sin so that you and I could be forgiven and we could be made right with God. Amen? That's very powerful. Why do most of church people live under guilt, shame, and condemnation? Why? Guilt, shame, condemnation. They don't study. They don't go deep to study what the Word of God says. Amen? Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Whose blood are we talking about? It's the blood of Jesus. Amen? The blood of Jesus is our victory. Revelation 12.11, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. If we don't even understand what the blood of Jesus has done for us, we're not going to be able to overcome because the devil is a bully and a terrorist. And he's a liar and a deceiver. Revelation 12, 9. He deceives the whole world. And he will come to you. He will start tormenting you. You are a piece of garbage. You are a hypocrite. Remember what you did day before yesterday. Remember what you did 10 years ago, remember what you did, remember what you did, you are no good, you are a hypocrite, blah, 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 blah. You know, he comes and he starts tormenting you. And what do you need to do? You need to overcome the lies of the enemy. How? By proclaiming what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Amen? Are, are we getting this? Are we getting this? The blood of Jesus is our victory. Look at the extreme death of Jesus on that cross. He who knew no sin became sin so that we could be made right with God. And even today, so many people don't even understand salvation. They try to earn it. 
They tried to earn it. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to. No. If we could save ourselves, Jesus wasted his time dying on the cross. Amen. We could not save ourselves. That's why he came. Amen. That's exactly why he came. It's a gift. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. We have been saved by grace through faith. And this is not of our own. It is a gift of God so that no one can boast. Amen? So he became sin for us so that we could be made right with God. Romans 8 verse 1. Now therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? So in the Catholic Church, we have the sacrament of reconciliation, confession. It's good because of the blood of Jesus. You understand that? It's the blood of the Lamb that empowers that sacrament. We got to know these things. Our victory is the blood of the Lamb. I was in Italy some years ago, and I was preaching on the blood of Jesus. And uh, there was a, an older lady that she was listening to everything I was saying. She was weeping and weeping. She was really touched by the Holy Spirit. I could, I could, I could see that. And afterwards, she came up to give testimony. And that she said, I've never heard a teaching on the blood of Jesus. I've been a Catholic all my life. I've never heard a teaching, anybody preaching on the blood of Jesus. And today I have understood for the first time in my life what the blood of Jesus has done for me. She says, I've been a Catholic all my life. And when I went to confession, I went to one priest. And then I went to a second priest to make sure that the first one had told me the truth. And then I went to a third priest. Every time I went to confession, I went to three priests. And I went to the third priest to make sure that what the first and the second priest had told me was okay. <laughs> are, are you understanding? That's not living in freedom and liberty. Amen? She had no revelation of what the blood of Jesus had done for her. And the Holy Spirit gives us I mean, the, the power to leave sin behind. Amen? The Holy Spirit is more powerful than your sin. If we, when we did not know Jesus, sin was master. He was sitting on the throne. Sin was seated on the throne. But when Jesus became Lord and Savior in your life, Jesus sat on the throne of your heart. Amen? We need to understand these things. We are born again. We're a new creation. We have God's DNA inside of us. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands to heaven and say, Lord, I thank you that you became sin for me so that I could be made right with God. I thank you today for the power of your blood. Amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty shout. One, two, three. Yay! Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Another amazing thing that the Lord did on the cross, he took every sickness and every disease so that we could be healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment for our peace came upon him by his wounds, we are healed. The punishment for our peace, the word there is shalom in the Hebrew language. And shalom is a more powerful word than just the regular English word of peace. Shalom is well-being in every area of your life. Amen? In your, with your body, with your mind, with your emotions, with your family, with your finances, with everything in your life. The punishment for our shalom came upon him. By his wounds, we are healed. And then in the New Testament, 1 Peter 2.24, Peter says, by his wounds, we were healed. When did your healing take place? At the cross. Amen? It's not a matter of, God, when are you going to heal me? When Jesus, when are you going to heal me? He already paid for that healing at the cross. It's there. You just need to receive it by faith. Amen? And then the Lord sends us to heal the sick. It's part of the commission. It's part of the, uh, the gospel of the kingdom of God. In Romans 1, 16, 
Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for the salvation of all who believe. And that word for salvation in the Greek language, it, it includes forgiveness of sins. It includes healing. It includes deliverance from demons. It includes restoration. Amen? It's not just dying and going to heaven. It's, it's, a, it's a, a word that includes the entire package. Amen? Hallelujah. See, it's that we are the church. There is a reason why we're here in this planet at this time. We represent a king and a kingdom. And the name Christ is a title. It means the Messiah, the anointed one. And Christians means the little anointed one. God's plan is that the world would be, the earth would be filled with little anointed ones carrying on with the works of Jesus. Is that hard to understand? Is it? One person said no. <laughs> is that hard to understand? That God's plan was to have little anointed ones, Christians, little anointed ones, all over the earth, carrying on with the works of Jesus. So anyways, on the cross, Jesus took every sickness, every disease, so that we could be healed. Amen? And so you, you need to ask yourself, am I on the same page <laughs> with the Holy Spirit? Because many people think a lot of weird things about sickness and disease. God sent me this sickness. He wants to, he wants to punish me. <laughs> God sent me this sickness. He wants to teach me a lesson. No, sickness and disease does not come from God. How did it enter the planet when Adam and Eve sinned? They disobeyed God. A demonic gate was opened and in came death and sickness and the curse and the, and the poverty and the addictions and everything else. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen? So we need to understand this. Even my mother, who was a doctor, the first time she got sick, I'm driving her to the doctor. I don't know why God sent me this disease. And I said, Mom, excuse me. The Lord did not send any sickness to you. He came to destroy sickness and disease. Sickness and disease entered the planet through the sin of, of man. But Jesus came to destroy that. Jesus is a healer. He doesn't give you sickness and disease. If, if we read the Gospels, Jesus healed people everywhere he went. Is that true or not? And he got in trouble for healing people on the Sabbath. Amen? He just did what he saw the Father doing. John 5, 19, Jesus said, I can only do what I see my Father doing. So he just healed people because our God is a healer. The first, one of the first, actually, the first revelation of God to his people after the crossing of the Red Sea, Exodus 15, verse 26, I am the Lord, your healer. Amen. It is part of his character and nature to heal us. Thank you, Lord. So that's part of our inheritance to receive healing, to receive healing. I was in Puerto Rico one time, and this, um, the husband of a lady that I knew, she was a prayer warrior. He was a, an old man by now, but he was sitting on the wheelchair, unable to walk. And somebody said, why don't you go and pray for Mr. So-and-so? So I went over to him, uh, lay hands on him, so that he would start walking again and he would not have to depend on the wheelchair. And so I laid hands on him and the Holy Spirit showed me that he did not understand what the Lord had done for him. And uh, because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of revelation, amen? And he goes to the root of the problem so, because he wants to set people free, okay? So when, when we pray, we have to listen, and we have to see whatever he wants to show us. So the Holy Spirit showed me that this man was sitting on the wheelchair, feeling guilty for the sins of his past, and that God wanted him in the wheelchair because of his past life, okay? That's what I received from the Holy Spirit. So I had to explain to him, you know, from scratch what the Lord had done for him, and, and how the Lord had taken this problem on the cross and that the Lord wanted him well. 
So I made him repeat some, some things, and I prayed in the Spirit over him. And you know what? He got up out of the wheelchair. Amen. That demonic lie was keeping him bound to that wheelchair. Are you getting this? That's why we need the truth, because the truth will set us free. At the end of the meeting, it was so touching because he came walking with, he came walking to give testimony with his wife of what the Lord had done for him. And he was weeping. And that sharing this testimony, everybody was crying. But it was a powerful testimony. When he came to the truth, he was set free. It was like the light hit him. I don't have to be in this wheelchair anymore. Amen? So, are you on the same page with the Holy Spirit? That the Lord wants you well? That He carried every sickness, every disease? That He carried every addiction? That He carried every mental and emotional problem on that cross? Everything that has a name, He, he took on that cross so that we could be healed? Do you know that on the cross he defeated COVID-19? Are you going to allow the fake news to keep you in fear in your life? We are a different people than the people in the world. I can understand the people in the world being bound by fear and allowing fear to control them. But we are the people of God. Amen? Amen? We have protection. The blood of Jesus is our protection. And even if we get sick, there is healing. Amen? Hallelujah. Dr. Jesus is more powerful than any medicine. And I'm not against doctors, okay? My mother was a doctor, my grandfather, my son, my brother. I'm not against doctors. Don't misunderstand me. But I run to Jesus if I get sick. That's the first person that I go to. Amen? That's the first person that I go to. So by his wounds, we have been healed. There was one lady in Argentina, stage four cancer in her uterus. And uh, I had a word of knowledge that the Lord was healing cancer. And uh, four people came up and um, I had them pray over themselves. And, I, and then I just touched them. And when she went back to the doctor, no cancer. She had been getting ready for surgery. When she went back to the uh, doctor, no cancer, no surgery. Is that good? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When my mother was dying after heart surgery, and I've shared this everywhere I go, uh, she had triple bypass at age 82. And uh, a few days later, she just uh, started to have hemorrhages in the hospital, and she was dying. And I heard, uh, it was on a Sunday, and I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. I was getting ready to go to Mass, and I heard the Holy Spirit said, go straight to the hospital. And I obeyed, thank God. And when I walked into her room, I, I knew something was wrong because that spirit of death was in the room. And I, I did not know that she was hemorrhaging to death. So I was quite surprised <laughs> when I saw what was going on. She had lost four pints of blood. And the nurses were coming up and giving her blood transfusions, and the blood would be lost. And I walked into that room, and my brother, who's a doctor, he's older than me, but he was totally into New Age, into Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, into yoga, into all the things from Eastern stuff. He never wanted to hear anything about Jesus. Never, never. And uh, my brother, the doctor, the genius, <laughs> was standing next to my mother, unable to do anything. And I walked into that room. And uh, when I saw my mother dying, I just wanted to sit on a chair and weep. But no, I'm a daughter of the Most High God. The Lord said, you go and do what I've always told you to do. You lay hands on her right now. And uh, I couldn't pray in English. I couldn't pray in Spanish. But I have a prayer language. Amen. Hallelujah. I laid hands on my mother, and I'm telling you what came out of my mouth was the loudest prayer in tongues. I was praying like a violent woman because I was battling the spirit of death, okay? 
and I just laid hands on my mother and I started to pray like a wild woman. It was so loud. <laughs> but I was battling death and I wanted my mother to live. So I did whatever I needed to do. I said, I'm going to shut my eyes. I'm not going to look at anybody. The nurses are going to come and take me to the psych ward. <laughs> but I continued until I heard the voice of God and the Holy Spirit said, it's done. So they took my mother for more tests and within half an hour, the nurse came back and she said, the hemorrhaging has stopped. Hallelujah. Yep. And why do I share the testimony? Because it was a miracle. Amen. Because the healing is progressive. A healing and a miracle is at the moment. And what happened to my brother? That was the first day that he encountered the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the first time in his life that he saw that Jesus was alive. He couldn't do anything being a doctor. But I came in with Dr. Jesus and my mother was healed. Amen. So that evening he said, Maria, it was Jesus who healed mom, wasn't it? And I said, yes, it was Jesus. I had to bite my tongue. Not to tell him it was not Buddha. It was not Mohammed. <laughs> it was Jesus. But I, I bit my tongue. I was nice. <laughs> you know, showing love. Said, yes, it was Jesus who healed mom. And he said, when you came and you placed your hands on her stomach, I saw Jesus standing next to you. I'm, I'm just showing you. Today, my brother is totally committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. His eyes were open that day. Yes, clap. Amen. <laughs> clap. Clap. The Lord wants you well. The Lord wants you healthy. The Lord wants you strong. Amen. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, Romans 8, 11, lives inside of us. That same spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Death could not hold Jesus because the spirit of God came and brought him back to life. That's the same spirit that you carry inside of you. Amen? Are you getting this? We cannot think like victims. We cannot think like people with, 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 you know, with self-pity, like orphans. We're more than conquerors. Hallelujah. So lift up your hands to heaven and say, Lord, I thank you that you took every sickness, every disease, every pain, every addiction, every mental issue, every emotional imbalance. You took it all on the cross so that I could be healed by your wounds. I have been healed and I take authority now in the name of Jesus and I command out of my body every spirit of sickness and disease, every spirit of pain. Get out now. I reject you. I kick you out of my body. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. Say, I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. You do not belong in me. Sickness and disease, get out in Jesus' mighty name. Let's give the Lord a mighty shout. One, two, three. Whoa! Thank you, Lord. The Lord is breaking addiction to, to marijuana, to Pot, P O T, marijuana. There is somebody here, I believe, that you are using uh, that drug and the Lord is setting you free. It could be somebody in your family, just receive it for them. Even if the government says that pot is okay, it's not okay. It messes your brain. Amen? It messes your brain. And it's an open door for other drugs. Okay? So, Every chain of addiction to any kind of drug being broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Starting with marijuana, we break those chains in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord doesn't want you addicted to anything. Amen. Just to be 
addicted to him, amen, to Jesus, in love with Jesus, hallelujah. Okay, another wonderful thing that the Lord did on the cross was that he carried the shame of our past. He carried our shame, the shame of the things that were done to us, the shame of the things that we might have done ourselves. He carried that shame on the cross. Psalm 69, verse 7. Psalm 69, verse 7. This is a messianic psalm that points to what Jesus did on the cross. It says that the shame covered the face of Jesus. And it was not his shame. He never did anything to cause shame to, in his life. It was our shame. The shame of the sexual abuse the shame of the rejection, the shame of the abandonment. Amen? Whatever shame of things that you might have done, he carried that. Why is that, imp why is that important? Because shame is an enemy. Shame will keep you trapped in a pit of passivity. Amen? The Lord says that we are the light and the salt of the earth, but shame will hold you down because you are afraid. Shame many times is the root of addictions. Amen? The root of depression, of self-pity, of self-rejection, of self-hatred. It's a bad root that bears bad fruit. So the Lord dealt with our shame. We don't have to carry that shame. David said in Psalm 3, you are my glory and the lifter of my head. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So it's so important that we break away from that, the shame of our past. We, because shame wants to keep you stuck in misery. See, when I, when I was young and I went to the university, I did not know Jesus. And so I believed everything they taught me. I was a very good student. I read every book they asked me to read. My major was sociology, and uh, it was, now I look at it, it was totally radical to the left. You know what I'm saying? So I learned a lot of lies, and one of the lies that I learned was, um, for example, that I own my own body as a female, and that it was my right to have an abortion that uh, nobody could tell me what to do with my body. If I wanted to have an abortion, you went ahead and you had your abortion. And uh, they brainwashed us with books like uh, zero population, uh, books about zero population growth and uh, telling us you can have more than two children, blah, 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 all these things. It was the, the, like the beginning of the women's liberation movement, okay? And... Um, so I believed, that, I believed that abortion was my right, a woman's right, and so on and so forth, and life went on. Then I married, and I, I had two, we had two sons in one year. And then I got pregnant again, and I said to myself, I'm not having this baby. It's, it's too much, too soon. And even though we had a lot of money and I had a lot of help in the house, I decided that I would abort this baby. And I, I went to the hospital and I had an abortion. And I came back home as if nothing. No big deal. That's, that's what, that was my belief system. I did not have any biblical truth in me because I had never, you know, I had never read the Bible. I had never really searched for real truth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I believed what I was taught at the university, thinking that my teachers and professors were lovers of truth, and they were fighting for truth. Anyways, I went ahead, I had my abortion. And then years later, when I came to the Lord, wow, my eyes were opened. My eyes were open, And I said to myself, oh, my God, I'm guilty of the death of my baby. God sent me life, and I killed, I'm guilty for killing that child. And of course, I repented. I asked the Lord for forgiveness. I went to confession, of course. But you know what? The devil came with shame, tormenting me with that abortion from the past. Maybe there are women here that you have had abortions. 
You know what? The blood of Jesus is more powerful than that abortion. The mercy of God is bigger than that abortion. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So anyway, so when I uh, gave my life to the Lord, my eyes were open and the enemy started to proceed to torment me with the shame of that abortion until I was reading the Bible and I discovered Psalm 69 verse 20. Hallelujah. Jesus, you took my shame. You took it on the cross. I don't have to carry that shame anymore. Hallelujah. So I was set free. Amen. I was set free. Thank you, Lord. I'm not boasting about the abortion. I'm boasting about the Lord. Amen. That he, he has dealt with all these major issues in our lives at the cross. So I, don't, I can say like David, you are my glory and the lifter of my head. Amen. So we need to get rid of the shame because the enemy will hook up to that shame. And the Lord gives us glory. John 17, verse 22. The Lord tells the Father, the glory you have given me, I give to them, to us. Amen? Instead of being covered with shame, we are covered with glory. Hallelujah. This is why it's good news. <laughs> this is why the gospel of the kingdom is good news. Hallelujah. But we need to experience this in order to share it with other people. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Another amazing thing. Okay, let's lift up our hands to heaven. Thank you, Lord. And say, Lord, I thank you that on the cross you took every bit of the shame in my life of what was done to me and what I did that has caused me shame. I will carry this no longer. You took my shame on the cross. I give it back to you. Cover me with your glory. And in the name of Jesus, I command out of me every spirit of shame, every spirit of depression, every spirit of self-rejection, every spirit of self-hatred, every spirit of addiction, every lying spirit, spirit of passivity, spirit of fear, get out now, out of my life, out of my body. Go to the feet of Jesus right now. Take a deep breath, and we're going to shout unto the Lord. One, two, three. Whoa! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you are experiencing freedom in your minds? Be honest. Thank the Lord. Freedom in your thinking. That you're saying, I don't have to go back to that place of misery. The Lord has set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Another uh, wonderful thing that Jesus did for us. We find that in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Jesus on the cross became a curse so that we could come out from under the curse and enter into the blessing of Abraham because Abraham is the father of our faith and everything that God gave Abraham, he gives to us. Genesis 24 verse 1 says that God blessed Abraham in every way every single way. Amen? And that's our inheritance. That's the blessing of Abraham in our lives. Long life, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of descendants, uh, victory, the favor of God, the favor of man upon our lives. Amen? Abraham had all of that upon him. Prosperity also. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Galatians 3.13. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians 3.13, I passed it. It says, um, <clears throat> Christ redeemed us from the curse 
of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, that's us, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, so there are blessings and there are curses that come upon us through our family trees, okay? And we know what a blessing is. Uh, let's say that um, athletic ability, we can see it coming down the family tree, like a fast runner, a fast runner, or artistic ability, or singing, or creativity, or high IQ. You see what I'm saying? We see these things running in the family. So those are examples of blessing. But what are examples of curses? When you see something negative, something bad, repeated in your family tree, that's a sign of a curse. Addictions to alcohol. Alcoholism, alcoholism, alcoholism. Cancer, cancer, cancer. Depression, depression, depression. When, when you sit and you ask the Holy Spirit to show it to, to you, He will. Amen? He will. So the Bible says in uh, Proverbs 26, I, I think verse 2, it says that the reason there is a curse, there is a reason why there is a curse. And the reason is sin. Okay? So we might be experiencing <laughs> stuff from the older generation that came because of a sin of our ancestor. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And when does this curse stop? When somebody recognizes it. You identify there is a curse in my life. See, I, even before I met the Lord, I knew there was something wrong with my generation because most of us are divorced. Most of us are divorced. I think there's only two that have not gotten divorced in my generation, in my family. And, I, and, I, and the previous generation, it was not like that at all. And I'm saying, there has to be something weird in this generation. And then when I came to the Lord, I started to understand. I started to read the Bible, and I started to understand there are curses that come down the family tree. And I started to search, why are there so many divorces and broken marriages in my family, in my generation. It turns out that my grandfather had been um, a Freemason. You know what Masonry is? Yes? It's, it's occultic. It's not a good organization. It's a secret society. And uh, it's not from God. And the higher you go up, it has 33 different levels. The higher you go up, the more satanic it becomes. And my grandfather went up to the highest level, level 33, okay? So that means that he said some really terrible things. Anyways, I could understand the source of all those uh, broken marriages in my generation. And then I looked at the guys, my brothers and my cousins, all of them addicted to alcohol, drugs, and or sex. I said, this is not normal. But the root cause, I believe, was the Freemasonry, the occultism that my grandfather had been dealing with, you know, for most of his life. Anyways, so I'm giving you an example of what a curse is. When you see negative, bad things, repeat it, okay? Broken marriages, broken marriages, coming down the family tree or like in my case, in the same generation. Amen? There's people that suffer from cancer, for example. They go to the doctor, they get well, and then again cancer comes. There's a curse there. You need to break that. What do we do? We go to the cross. Amen? I was in Poland, and uh, this uh, lady, young lady in her early 30s came to me, and obviously she had been... Uh, going through cancer treatments because she had no hair and she was wrapped with some, uh, something, with some cloth in her head. And she said, I have a brain tumor. It's cancerous. Uh, doctors cannot do anything else. They've done everything. There's nothing more they can do. And she said, my father died from the same thing when he was 
35 years old. I said, sister, I have good news for you. She looked at me like, what is, she? you know, she looked at me with her eyes like this. I have to explain something to you. There is a curse on your life. Your father died of that brain, cancerous brain tumor. You have the same thing, but now we're going to go to the cross. We're going to break that, that uh, curse over your life in Jesus' mighty name. So what did we do? Father, in Jesus' name, we have identified a curse of cancerous tumors in the brain. Lord, we repent for the sins of the fathers. We ask you to cleanse her bloodline right now. And we nail back on the cross this curse of that cancerous tumor in the brain. It's nailed back on the cross. It doesn't belong to you any longer. And then I said, your healing has begun now. And I laid hands on her. I put my hand on her head. And in Jesus' name, I took authority. And I cursed the root of that uh, tumor, and I said, you must disappear in Jesus' mighty name. Get out. You know, I did not see that, that lady for a few years. And after a few years, it was amazing because they, we were doing some television programs in, in Poland, and they told me, you need a fashion coordinator. <laughs> so they sent me a fashion coordinator. Guess who the fashion coordinator was? That lady. Amen? Totally healed. Hallelujah. The tumor disappeared. And she was getting ready to get married. Thank you, Lord. Is that amazing? Or what? The doctors had given her a death sentence. There's nothing more that, that we can do for you. You're not going to last any longer. But Jesus had another report in Isaiah 53, verse 5, and Galatians 3, 13. My brother, the doctor, had a patient that had just gotten married, and uh, she came back to see him, and, and, and uh, she could not get pregnant. You know, she wanted to have a baby. She wanted a family. She could not get pregnant. So they, they, my brother sent her to um, whatever doctor to check what, what was going on in her uterus, and the diagnosis came back. You have cancer in your uterus. And we're going to treat you for this cancer, but you're never going to be able to have any children. So my brother told her, you know, let my sister pray for you. And so I prayed with her and I asked her, has there been cancer in your family tree before? She says, oh, a lot of cancer, both on my mother's side and father's side. See, the curses were coming down. Now the curse was manifesting in her uterus. And so we took the steps and we broke in Jesus' name. See, the curses are broken already at the cross, but we need to appropriate the blessing by faith. Amen? So anyways, we took the necessary steps, and then I laid hands on her for the healing in her uterus. And uh, in less than a year, she sent my brother, she texted my brother, a picture of her with her first baby. Amen? She got healed of cancer in the uterus, and she was able to have children. Hallelujah. I'm just showing you that this is real. The cross is real. What Jesus did was real. It's still real today. The cross has to become real to us, not just something that happened 2,000 years ago. What do we celebrate in Mass? What is the celebration of Mass? Eucharist means thanksgiving. What are we thanking Him for? The victory of the cross. Amen? But go to Mass, everybody looks depressed. It's true. It's true. Everybody is sad, depressed, focused on the problem, focused on the difficulty, prob focused on everything that you don't like, instead of lifting up your eyes to the Lord and start looking at Him. And, you know, in your mind, in your, with your voice, with your tongue, thanking Him for everything that He has done for you, starting at the cross so that we could have a new life in this planet. Amen. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? The eyes are a gate. With the eyes of your heart, 
If you're only looking at the problem, you're going to become the problem, I'm telling you, because you become what you're always looking at. Thank you, Lord. But that's another, that's another teaching. I'm not going to go there. So Jesus on the cross became a curse so that the curses could be broken and we could be blessed. Amen. There is alcoholism in my family tree. I'm not an alcoholic, never was, but my brother was an, an alcoholic and a drug addict. And on my, uh, and, um, on my ex-husband's side of the family, there's alcohol as well. And I said, no way, I'm going to take action here. I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to go to the Word of God. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to stand on Galatians 3.13 and that curse of alcohol broken over my children in Jesus' mighty name. I took the necessary steps. I asked the Lord to, to forgive us of whatever sins had brought that addiction on both sides of the family. I repented for the sins of the fathers. I asked the Lord to cleanse my bloodline. I broke that addiction to alcohol and my four children are not bound to alcohol or drugs. That's a miracle in these days in Miami. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Are you understanding the blessing and the curses? Yeah? I was in Poland, and uh, a lady came with her son. Both of us have tumors behind the eyes. Are you understanding this? Both I have, she said, the mother said, I have tumors behind the eyes. And my son has tumors behind the eyes. And she said, we don't understand why this is happening to us because we are really good people. <laughs> we are really good. I said, it has nothing to do with whether you're good or bad. This is totally spiritual. This is a curse. And this is coming down your family tree. It has nothing to do with you being good or bad. It's what you need to do is take action and understand that at the cross, Jesus became a curse for you so that you could be blessed. Come out of that curse, uh, that uh, tumors behind the eyes, and you can come out into your healing and into your freedom. So I laid hands on them, and we took the necessary steps. See, people don't understand. Not people. Believers don't understand this. And they just say, well, I guess that's the way it is because everybody in my family was like that. You know? We have people with outbursts of anger and violence. Well, everybody in their family is like that. What can you expect? No, that's a curse. Why are we accepting what the devil sends to us? Amen? No, no. Jesus died. He became a curse so that we could be freed. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands to heaven and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that on the cross, you became a curse for me so that I could come out from under the curse and into the blessing of Abraham. I decree and I declare this morning, say it, I decree and I declare this morning that every curse coming my family tree, on my father's side, on my mother's side, was broken and dealt with at the cross. And I receive freedom today. I receive freedom this morning. That curse does not belong to me, does not belong to my children, does not belong to my descendants. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Come on. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you, you, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to show you curses. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, every year I find a new one, okay? <laughs> it's, it's a process of revelation. One by one, one after the other. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe that there are, there are people here that uh, you were spoken um, 
there are word curses over your life. Because we have the power of life and death in the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. And if you were raised in a home where your parents or people in authority kept telling you how stupid you are, you're a good for nothing, you will never amount to anything, why did I ever, you know, give birth to you? Uh, you are this and you're that, you're, you, you're a you are a good for nothing. If you were spoken those things by people in authority, those become word curses, amen? And probably you have been experiencing a lot of failure because of that curse operating over your life. It's amazing, parents should be telling their children, you are awesome, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, but most, maybe most of our parents did not know the Lord. Amen? And they just raised you in the same way that they were raised. And some of you have cursed yourself. I'd rather die than live with your tongue. What, when you speak like that, I'd rather die than live, what are you attracting in the invisible realm? You're attracting demons. You're attracting death. You're attracting sickness and disease, depression. You are at attracting all these evil spirits when you speak like that. Amen? So you curse yourself. And then you wonder why you feel so rotten. So I, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. And if you identify with what I have just said, that you were raised in such a home, and that you spoke such things about yourself, why don't you stand up? Stand up, we're going to break those curses in Jesus' name. We're going to break those curses in the mighty name of Jesus. You want to be set free. You want to be set free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your hands to heaven. Everybody with your eyes closed, lift up your hands to heaven. And say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority now. And I break over my life. Every curse word spoken over my life by my parents, by people in authority, I forgive them today, but I break the power of those words in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of every self-imposed curse Every word, every death word that I've spoken over myself, Lord, forgive me because you have amazing plans for my life. And I have been listening to the devil. Forgive me, Lord. And now I break, in the name of Jesus, the power of every death word, every curse of death broken over my life in Jesus name today I decree and I declare that I am free that I am the head and not the tail that I am above and not beneath that I have the mind of Christ that the spirit of excellence is over my life that I can do all things through Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty shout. Whoa! Thank you, Lord. I break over your life every spirit of failure, every assignment of depression, every assignment of self-hatred and self-rejection, self-pity is broken over your life, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just come and fill them up. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I got to finish quickly to take a break, and then we're going to have a healing service. Hallelujah. The Lord is already healing. Okay, another thing that Jesus did, we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, is that Jesus took our poverty at the cross. Amen? He took our poverty so that we could experience abundance. 
Second Corinthians 8, verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. It says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. See, it's an exchange. He became poor so that we could experience abundance. Amen? It's all about an exchange. He became sin so that we could be forgiven and be declared not guilty and be made right with God. He took every sickness and disease so that we could be healed. He took our shame so that we could be freed and experience glory. He took the curses so that we could come out from under the curse into the blessing of Abraham. He took our shame so that we could experience glory. He took our poverty on the cross so that we could experience abundance. Amen? God has a plan for your prosperity. Um, money is not a sin. What is a sin is the love of money. The problem is in your heart. Amen? If you put money as the idol in your life, that's a sin. It's called idolatry. But money itself is not a sin. Amen? You can put many idols in your altar. Maybe you have a, a, a gift of, um, maybe you're a tennis champ. There's nothing wrong with tennis. It's a beautiful sport, but it, if that becomes your idol, that it becomes a sin. So it's the same with money. The Lord wants you to prosper. The Lord wants you to experience abundance. Amen? Because His plan is that we get so blessed that we become a blessing in this planet. Are you getting this? Yeah, that's the plan. But a lot of, a lot of Catholics don't have that revelation, and they think that prosperity is a bad thing. No, it's not. It's not. Jesus became poor on the cross so that we, as his people, we could experience abundance. I, I've been going to Africa for two decades. I, I know what poverty is. It's demonic. It's demonic. Amen? Because that poverty is not only about money. It's a mindset. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of living. And you never have enough. Amen? You never have enough to take care of your family. You never have enough to take care of your needs and the needs of your children and your wife. That's not what God wants. God wants to prosper you so that you can experience abundance, so that you have leftover and you can become a blessing to other people. Amen? And we, we, we got to start thinking big, you know? We need to start buying radio stations television stations, so that the proclamation of the gospel can be proclaimed 24-7. Amen? We, we need to, you know, we need to, have to start thinking big. Hallelujah. Building Catholic Christian hospitals where we can pray in the name of Jesus, where we can say Jesus freely without the government controlling us, without having to be politically correct. You can't mention Jesus. No, I'm going to mention Jesus. I don't care what the government says. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But you know what I'm saying? We need to start investing money in the kingdom of God. Amen. How about building schools of evangelization? How about training people in praise and worship? How about Christian drama and theater and music and everything else. You see, we have not thought, we have not thought with, with, in a big way. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Poverty is a curse. And it affects every area of your life. I, in, in Africa, we're building homes for the pygmies. These people are, uh, were living in, in, in grass in little grass spaces. And it's so cold in the morning, so cold at night, and it rains a lot. They, 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 that shelter was a piece of garbage. Our dogs and cats live better than them. Amen? They're poverty-stricken. That's not what God wants. So Jesus on the cross 
became poor so that we could experience abundance. Amen? And I could go on and on and on. In Miami, we, we opened up um, a ministry for the rescued victims from sex trafficking. And um, we always give our tithe and offerings. I personally give them. That is God's plan for your prosperity because when we give, more comes to us. But I don't have the time to, to go into an explanation. But as a ministry, it's called the Glory House of Miami. We sold $500 in another ministry. You know what came into our hands? 9,000. Amen? You cannot outgive God in generosity. You cannot give God, outgive God in generosity. Thank you, Lord. So I have a lot of testimonies, but I need to move on. Thank you, Lord. So lift up your hands to heaven and say, Lord, I thank you that you became poor for me so that I could experience abundance, so that I could experience being a blessing, not only being blessed, but becoming a blessing in this planet. Come Holy Spirit, give me a download of revelation. Give me new ways of doing things. Give me Insight, new tactics, so that I can prosper and I can become a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. I have the mind of Christ and the spirit of excellence is upon me. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty shout. Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Another amazing thing that Jesus did on the cross was that he took our broken heart. And we see this in Psalm 69. We go back to Psalm 69. And in verse 20, that Psalm says that he died of a broken heart. And everybody at one point or another, we have experienced a broken heart. Amen? Maybe the death of a son, a child, Maybe miscarriages, maybe your marriage got broken, maybe, you know, um, you have gone through a lot of difficulties, abandonment, rejection. We know what a broken heart is all about. And Jesus took it on the cross so that we could be healed. Amen? So that our broken hearts could be mended. Hallelujah. In Psalm 69, verse 20, it says, this is Jesus at the cross. Reproach has broken my heart, and I am so sick. And I looked for sympathy, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. It was a broken heart that he carried at the cross. And he did it so that our hearts could be healed. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So I know what a broken heart is because my marriage was broken, and I know exactly what a broken heart feels like. You know, it's like it feels broken. Sometimes I ex it felt like my heart was bleeding. I just felt that it was so broken that it was bleeding. But you know what? Dr. Jesus healed my heart. And the first step into having your heart healed is by forgiving the people that have offended you and that have hurt you. Amen? That's the first step into having our hearts healed. Because the blood of Jesus has forgiven us of everything. And Papa doesn't even keep a record of our wrongdoing. Did you know that? So now we are called to forgive. We don't want to stay offended ever. Amen? So if there's people here that you need to forgive, why don't you just get up and we're going to forgive? We're going to take steps of faith. We're going to forgive Unforgiveness is an open door into your temple where the enemy has access. What does he do? John 10.10. 10. He steals, kills, and destroys. If you need to forgive, just get up. We're going to forgive. Thank you, Jesus. Forgiveness is a decision that we take in our minds. Amen? 
People say, but I don't feel like forgiveness. I said, it's not about your emotions. It's about faith. We take steps of faith. The Word of God says to forgive, we need to forgive. And when the Word of God says for us to do something, He supplies the grace, okay? He supplies the power. So just open up your arms like this and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I make up my mind right now. I make a decision now to forgive every person that has hurt me, that has lied to me, that has abused me, that has tried to manipulate me and to control me. Every person that has rejected me, abandoned me, lied about me. I receive the grace now by faith. In the name of Jesus, I forgive them all right now. Take a moment of silence and just be calling them by name, release them by name. Place them in the hands of the Father. Place them in Papa's hands. Just place them one by one, one by one. Give them up. Say this, in the name of Jesus, I forgive them all. Lord, I give you all the unforgiveness, the resentment, the anger, the root of bitterness. I give it all to you. Take away the heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh. Fill me now with your presence with the joy of your salvation. Thank you, Lord, that I am freed this morning from lying spirits, from spirits of depression, from spirits of shame, confusion, self-hatred, self-pity. I am free this morning. Addictions, get out. Every spirit that is not the Holy Spirit, get out of my life now. In Jesus' name, take a deep breath and let's give the Lord a mighty shout. One, two, three. Whoa! Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, I want to finish. I think I've covered uh, six of them. Now to the seventh one. This is Jesus at the cross, Matthew 27, verse 46. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus at the cross felt forsaken and abandoned. Why did he do that? So that we could be adopted into God's family. Amen? So that we could become sons and daughters. And we find, let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Ephesians, chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you glory, Lord. Ephesians, chapter 1. I'm going to start in verse 4 and 5. I'm going to start in verse 3. <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. So, why did Jesus went, why did he have to go through that experience of being abandoned and rejected so that we could be adopted into the family of God? And we have to know our identity. Amen? We are sons and daughters of God. And when we have that revelation of who we are, that God becomes daddy. Are you getting this? God becomes 
daddy, and God is a good daddy, amen? And when he looks at us, he smiles, and he says, that's my girl. You know what I'm saying? He's not passing condemnation because Jesus has already redeemed us by his blood, amen? Now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, verse 1. It's all, the battle is in your mind. It's against, it's a battle of truth and lies. It's a battle between good and evil. And your mind is the place of the warfare. It's a battle of thoughts. So what do we need to do? We need to get into the Word of God. Amen? So that every lie be exposed. So that every lie be replaced with the truth of the Word of God. John 8, 32, Jesus says, you're going to come to know the truth. The truth will set you free. God has amazing plans for your lives. Amen? You were created to be a champion. God created you for greatness. And very few people fulfill the prophetic destiny of God in this planet. Salvation is more than just dying and going to heaven one day. Sal full salvation is walking like Jesus walked in this planet. Amen? Because Papa has given everything that he gave Jesus to us. There is a plan and a purpose for your life. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You're not an error. He created you with a kingdom purpose. But for us to fulfill the plan and the call that God has for us, we have to know what he did for us. Amen? And we have to know that we are sons and daughters of God. I don't know, maybe your earthly father was a disaster. You know what? The Lord will repay for you the years that the locusts have eaten. But you need to get to know your heavenly papa because he's good and he's always good. And he has given you a full inheritance. And when the Holy Spirit comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, he is the spirit of adoption. Romans 8:15. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption. And it's by the Spirit that we can say, Abba, Father. That means daddy. It's personal. We have to know the heart of the Father. Amen? We have to know the heart of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to take a break. But before I want to take a break, before we take a break, is there anybody here that you have never given your life to Jesus Christ? You have never really repented? You have never really turned to the Lord? Romans 10, 9 and 10, Paul says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Because it's with the heart that we believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth we believe unto salvation. So my question is, have you ever publicly stood up and confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior? This is how we receive salvation. If you're thinking, I don't know if I have done that, you've never done it. <laughs> because you remember, you will remember this day. Anybody? Maybe you can play background music, please. Anybody? Okay, come to the front. Thank you, Jesus. You can stand here. Hallelujah. Good. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? This is a moment of grace. Thank you, Jesus. Salvation is a free gift. This is what you're receiving right now after we confess Jesus. I, I think there's more people, and I believe there are guys here that, men, that you need to Give your life to Jesus. Don't let fear of what people think keep you stuck to the pew. It's all about you and Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, just open up your arms like, no, no, you can. 
open up your arms like that, and I want you to repeat in a loud voice, because there is the power comes when you speak it. We have the power of life and death in the tongue, okay? So, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you right now with a repentant heart. Lord Jesus, I confess that I have sinned, that I have fallen short of the glory of God. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God, the Savior of the world. I believe that you died for me on the cross, that my punishment came on you so that I could be forgiven and set free. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me clean with your precious blood. I renounce Satan. I renounce sin. I renounce the lies of the enemy. And now I confess with my mouth what I believe in my heart, that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation and eternal life with you. Amen. You received it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now open up. We, we want the Holy Spirit. We want the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The Lord has plans for your lives. And in order to fulfill the plan of God, you need the Holy Spirit. The Christian life is empowered by the Holy Spirit. The Christian life is impossible without the Holy Spirit. Amen. We try to live without the Holy Spirit, and we fail, and we fail, and we fail, and we fail. But the Holy Spirit is God. <laughs> and now, He wants to be, uh, He wants to fill you with His presence. So I'm just going to, if you, you can extend your hands over these four precious daughters of God, and we're going to lay hands on you so, so that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Jesus, stand if you have your prayer language just stand by me praying in the spirit praying in the spirit praying in the spirit come Holy Spirit fill her to overflowing to overflowing to overflowing to overflowing fill this daughter of yours Lord to overflowing with the Holy Spirit thank you Lord you're touching her heart you're touching her Lord Come with power, Lord. Come with power. Come with power. Fill her with your love, God. Fill her with your love. Fill her with your love. I believe the Lord is saying to you that um, I see you with lots of boldness. You are telling everyone around about Jesus and you're healing sick people. I see the gifts of healing being released through your hands. God is going to use you powerfully with the young people. You, the Lord says you are light. You are the light in the darkness for these young people. You're going to show them the way. You're going to show them the way. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Receive, receive, receive. Receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I see the Lord receive, uh, releasing a lot of freedom, a lot of freedom in your life right now. And I, I see that you have been misunderstood. Some people have not understood what you carry. Amen. And the, the Lord is saying things are shifting and changing. I'm going to use you to prophesy. I'm going to give you dreams and visions. You're going to 
There's a prophetic anointing upon you. It's good. You can smile at that. Oh, Fill her, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Fill her to overflowing, Lord, from head to toe. To overflowing from head to toe, from head to toe, from head to toe. Fire, let the fire of God come. Let the fire of God start burning in your heart right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Um, what we're going to do now is everybody stand up. And we're, we're going to cry out to the Lord for a fresh, a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you are hungry for more? Amen. Get excited. Get excited. The Holy Spirit loves the hunger. He responds to hungry people. Amen. He fills the hungry with good things. Get hungry. Get hungry. Lift up your hands to heaven. Lord, I ask you now to baptize your people with a fresh new baptism of the Holy Spirit. Come with power, God. Come with fire, Lord. Let the fire burn in their hearts. Let the fire burn in their hearts. Let them be fire starters, oh God. Let that fire burn, burn. Holy Spirit, come. Come with dunamis power, the miracle working power of God. Let every gift of the Holy Spirit be released in your lives. The power gives, gifts of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of faith. Let the revelation gifts be released. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit. Let the gift of tongues be released, interpretation, the gift of prophecy. Let revelation flow. Let the prophetic flow. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord. Come, Lord, in a new way. Fresh new anointing, stronger anointing for miracles, signs and wonders, God. Miracles, signs and wonders, Lord. Supernatural healings, creative miracles, God. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. We give you glory. I will lay hands on you quickly. Pa, pa, pa. Amen. But I need catchers. Thank you, Lord. Whoever wants to be, we can stand here. You can stand here. For the laying on of hands, it's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. This is about a fresh new anointing. This is about receiving a fresh new anointing. You can come closer to me. Of the Holy Spirit. This is not about your son or your nephew or anybody else, okay? Focus. Be focused. Lift up your hands to heaven. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit. Oh, more Lord. More Lord. More Lord. More, 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 horra baraba. Hi, fresh new anointing. Thank you, Lord. You catch us, you need to move quickly. Open arms, open arms. Oh, receive the fullness in the name of Jesus. Oh, chikala baba 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 baba. Come to the front. Arms open to the Lord. Oh, chikala baba. Receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit quickly. Come on. Oh, rikala bala bara, chikala bara bara. Lord, you know what you're doing? Asking the Lord for the, for the Holy Spirit. Ho chikala ba You don't have to fall if you don't want to. This is what the Spirit does. Ho chikala ba ra ba ra ba ra ba ra. Ho ya la 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 ra ba ra ba ra ba ra. Shoko ra ba ra ba ra ba ra. Oh, lor, 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 lor. Open arms. Help breathe on her, Lord. 
Hey, chica, la, 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 la. Oh, rabara, chica, la, la, mana. I already pray for you. Oh, corrabara, bara. You, you can let other people come now. Oh, ramana, we need new, the new people. New people come to the front. The moment is now. It's not later, because you come later than asking. Fill her, Lord. Open her arms. I'm closer, closer. Oh, shikala bara bara, shikala baba. Oh, so kurra mana mana. Oh, kurra bara 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 bara. Oh, ya la 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 la. Receive, receive. Oh, kurra bara shikala baba. Oh, raba shikala baba 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 bara 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 bara. Oh, raba bara 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 la 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 la. Oh, shikara mana shikala bara bara. Breathe on her, Lord God. Hey, baba bara shikala baba baba baba. Oh, rabara, bara, bara, bara. Thank you, Lord. Oh, shikala, bara, so kurramana. Oh, rabara, bara. Oh, shikala, bara, so kurramana, mana, 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 mana. Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, rabara, la, 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 la. Oh, rabba, shikala, open arms. Shikala, bara, bara, come, Lord, with fire, with fire, with fire. Fill him. Fill him to overflowing. Fill him to overflowing. Oh, shikala, bara, bara, mana. Breathe on her, Lord. Oh, Receive, receive. Oh, Ramana Manayo. Oh, Ramana Sikababa. Oh, Ramana Manayo. Arms to heaven. Shikara Manana. Oh, Ramana Sikalabarabana. Just receive, just receive. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Fill her to overflowing, Lord. Did I pray for you already? Do they want? No, I, this is for people that want it. I'm not going to push myself on anybody. No, 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 no. More joy. More joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Fill him, Lord. Fill him, Lord. Breathe on her, Lord. Breathe on her, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, rabara bara, la 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 la. Ho kuchika ba so kurra ba saka la ba 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 ma. Ndara mana 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 mana. Ho kurra bara shika la. Ho kurra ba 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 ba. Feel her Lord, feel her Lord. Ho rabara bara bara na 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 na. Ho kurra bara la 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 na 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 na. Oh, Come Holy Spirit. Oh, Freedom, Shikara Baba. New anointing, new anointing in Jesus' name.
There is a prayer language that the Lord releases. Amen? This prayer language is very powerful. It releases the voice of God. It releases the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It changes you. So if it's inside of you, it's a matter of, of, of that gift being, being um, how do you say, released. So can you just stand up for a moment? Like a baby, the rivers flow from here, not from the mind. From here. Come on, open up your mouth. Let sounds come out. Oh, ra ba 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 ra la 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 ra la 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 la. Uturu mana ya ra ya ra ya ra ya ra ya ra. Oh, ra la la la. Come on, make an effort. You, it's the Holy Spirit praying with your spirit. Don't be passive. Make an effort. Start. Oh, la ba 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 ba. Koko ra ba la ba la ba la ba la ba la. Koko ra ba ra si kalabara ya ya. Hey, <laughs> These two, are you a couple? You're a couple? I see an anointing on your life for finances. Uh, claim it. I see an anointing for finances, uh, wisdom, wisdom for, for multiplication of finances, but I also see both of you together like ministering to married couples. Yes, oh really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, I see you being a blessing to married couples. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to take a break. Ten minute break. Um, we come back for a healing service. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was announced until, until what time? Until 2. It's 1.20. Huh? We do have snack bars and um, water in the room right there in that corner, if you'd like some.
that it, it's actually called Holy Spirit. Holy just, Spirit. Just Holy Spirit. Oh, just Holy Spirit. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And it's and by, by a group called Jesus Culture. Oh, Jesus Culture. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they made it a while ago. But. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, I, when I go to St. Mary's, we don't sing a lot of those songs. We sing um, maybe more traditional. It's all from the St. Mary's Parish. Uh-huh. Well, that's actually the first one that was from St. Anne's. But, oh. And then, so we sing Yes, Lord, Yes, Lord. Yeah, so actually the Yes Lord, Yes Lord song is actually called, it's called Trading My Sorrows. Oh, so it's okay. actually called Trading My Sorrows. Yeah. But everybody knows it by Yes Lord, mm-hmm. Yes Lord. I bet I could find it now. Because mm-hmm. I know only part of it. And, we, and open my eyes, Lord, I know. And who sings that one? Who is that song? Uh, I think that one's written by a guy named Paul Belosh. Paul oh, Belosh? Belosh or Belosh. trying to write him down, I couldn't remember. Oh yeah, no, not to worry, yeah, we did um, Lord I Lift Your Name on High, oh, that, yes. that's the other one, and we did We Will Serve the Lord, that one's by Rory Cooney. We will serve the Lord, mm-hmm. both of those are great songs. You are awesome, your music, your voice, everything, beautiful. Praise be to God, thank you. su cuerpo. Los católicos no saben nada. Así que sí se puede. Yo no me atrevo a tocar nada. Caso de que se sabe que no.
Okay, we're going to get started in the second session. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Let's practice. As people come in, let's practice the prayer language. Get excited about this. I don't hear anybody. Come on. Oh, Oh, Lord, we bless you, we thank you. Jesus, there's nobody like you. You are so awesome, so beautiful. Capture our hearts, Lord. We want to fall in love with you. You are the lover of our souls. We are your bride. We want to go deeper. We want to experience your glory, your presence. You are so good, so good. So, I already touched on Isaiah 53, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment for our peace was upon him by his wounds. We are healed. So what the Lord put in my heart for this session is for all of us to understand that healing is a done deal, okay? He already paid for it at the cross. It's part of our inheritance and that we need to learn how to access that healing. And not only that, when we get healed, to stay healed. Because the devil is a thief. He loves to steal whatever we receive. Amen? So it's so important that we have that revelation. Oh, my God is a healer. He wants me well. Because many people don't understand that. Many people think that uh, God is disinterested in their healing, disinterested in their well-being, that he doesn't care about the details of your life. No, my papa cares about everything in my life. Amen? From the smallest detail to the largest problem or difficulty that there could ever be. Amen? We don't want to limit the power of God. And we want to we wanna trust God starting with small things, okay? So I used to teach a, a class in my parish called Healing Through the Word of God. And I, I would tell my, my people, start trusting God for a headache. Start taking authority over a headache. So that when, if something worse comes, God willing, nothing worse comes. But if something worse comes, you already have that trust in God that He can set you free from whatever. And I remember years ago teaching, what if there is a biological warfare going on? It's happening. Amen? It's happening. Thank God that we have medicines that can overcome that virus. But what if there are other things that cannot be overcome by, me by medicine? You know what? Dr. Jesus. Amen? We got to go to the cross. We got to make the cross real. The fact that he took every sickness and every disease so that we could be healed. Amen? Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his 
benefits. Do you know that there are benefits for us as sons and daughters of God? Just like American citizens have certain benefits, well, when we are part of God's family, there are certain benefits that are ours, okay? Do not forget His benefits. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. Amen? He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He renews your life as the eagles. He satisfies you with good things. That's part of the benefits. Amen? Jesus paid a price, horrible price. That death on that cross was absolutely horrible, horrendous. Why? So that we could experience the abundant life in this planet. John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come to bring you life, and life more abundantly. Amen? When people don't know the truth, they blame God for everything. Like my mother blaming God for the problem that came on her body. Because she did not know the Word of God. So we need to be a people of the truth. We need to start digging deeper and, and going after the truth. So that, um, the purpose of this little teaching is so that we can learn what to do if we get sick. Amen? So in the scriptures, we see that Jesus was healing everywhere that he went. And every time that he sent his disciples to proclaim the gospel, it went accompanied with heal the sick. Matthew 10, 7 and 8. And as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick. Matthew 16, starting in verse 15. Go and proclaim the gospel to every creature. In verse 18, it says, You shall lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And then he gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes with what? Gift of healing. Not one, plural. Gifts of healing. And gift of miracles. Why would God tell us to go do something? Why would He equip us and empower us to go and do something if He did not mean it? Amen? The Bible says that God is not like man. If He says that, God is not a liar. If He says it, that settles it. He means it. So all of us, remember, we are Christians. We are little anointed ones. We're supposed to go everywhere carrying on with the works of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can smile. Amen. This is something wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So every time that, that, that the Lord sent his um, disciples, it was accompanied, not only speak it, but demonstrate, heal the sick. Our God is a healer. Our God is a God of restoration. Amen. And his whole work on the cross was to bring back a fallen world back to the original intention of why we were created. Amen. And from day one, we see in the book of Genesis that we had dominion. The Lord gave us dominion, gave us authority. And now in the New Testament, he has restored all of that once again to us. And he gives us the power of the Holy Spirit. We have everything that we need. Amen? We just need to believe it. We just need to believe it. Amen? So I have five points. What to do when, when, when you get diagnosed with any sickness or any disease? Point number one, do not own it. Don't own it. I hear people say, oh, my cancer. Oh, my earth. No, it's not yours. He took it at the cross. does not belong to you. Point number one, do not own it. Stop talking foolishness because we have power in the tongue for life or death. Start talking, oh, my goodness, I have this now in my body. I won't be able to do this. Stop that. You need to speak the word. So point number one, do not own that problem in your body. Do not own it. It's not yours. It be, he took it at the cross. Amen? Point number two, 
use your authority. Amen. The Lord has given us authority. He has delegated authority on us. Ephesians 2, 6, we are seated in heavenly places. That is a place of authority. Everything is, everything that has a name is under our feet. What is the name of the problem in your body or in your mind, in your emotions? Whatever the name is under your feet. Amen. Seated in heavenly places. We are in the throne room of God. We're seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. We are actually, we are in two places, here and there. But we operate up from there. We are not operating for victory. The victory is already there. We are enforcing the victory over that situation. Are you understanding this? Are you getting this? Because this will change your life. This will transform your life totally. The victory was already won by Jesus, by the power of his blood, won. Now we enforce the victory. We are kingdom enforcers. And if I get sick in my body with something that does not belong to me, I'm going to enforce the victory over that spirit of sickness and disease that has entered me. Amen? Luke 10, 19, we have authority to trample over every serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. So when spirits come to attack your body, instead of owning it and becoming afraid, understand that you are seated on top of that and you start stepping that. Amen? Let's get up and do it. In the name of Jesus, start marching over the enemy. I have authority to trample over every serpent and scorpion, over every spirit of sickness and disease. You need to get out of my body now. Go to the feet of Jesus. You do not belong in me. I step all over you. Amen? This is what you do. Some of you, oh no, I'm going to look like a fool. Okay, stay sick then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, you may be seated. So, point number one, you do not own it. You don't own it. Stop saying, my this and my that, it's not yours. Point number two, use your authority. Point number three, stand on the Word of God. Isaiah 53, verse 5, 1 Peter 2, 24, Psalm 103 that I just uh, read. Any other passage of Scripture where you see Jesus healing, you stand on, on, on the Word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word will never pass away. Amen? Stand on the Word of God. Stand on the promises of God. All of this is spoken. This is spoken. This is not a meditation. This is all spoken. Thank you, Lord. And then, um, point number five, lay hands on yourself. Oh, point number four, after you stand on the Word of God, you stand on the promises, you start thanking the Lord in faith. First Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks to the Lord in every circumstance. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. You thank the Lord in faith. You open your mouth. Thank you, Lord, that the healing has already begun. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Many, many years ago, when I just came to the Lord, I had a, a growth in my eyelid that was getting bigger and bigger, and it looked really nasty. So I went to the eye doctor. And he said, well, it's an infected gland in your eyelid. It's only going to get worse. And I'm going to have to give you a shot in your eyelid and scrape that thing away. I got home and I said, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you told us that if we had faith, we could move mountains out of the way. This is not a mountain. It's an infected gland. So I cursed it in Jesus' name and I put my hands over that gland and I started to take authority. Immediately, nothing happened. 
Actually, it got a little worse, but I kept persevering. And suddenly one day, that thing was smaller. And then it was smaller and smaller, and it totally disappeared. Amen? So we thank the Lord in faith. We thank the Lord in faith. And point number five, pray in the Spirit. You need to lay hands on yourself. You pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is praying the perfect prayer. Amen? The Holy Spirit is 100% for you. The Holy Spirit is your biggest fan. And He wants the best for you. Amen? And He always hits the target. The Holy Spirit doesn't suffer from unbelief or lack of faith. <laughs> He's not confused. Okay? So we pray in the Spirit. We pray in the Spirit. So, there are times that we're going to be alone. We're, we might not feel well. We don't give in to that sickness, okay? I was in Poland. The last time that I was in Poland, I, I was... Uh, On that day, I was supposed to give a retreat, starting in the morning, and when I woke up that morning, I had what? Diarrhea. <laughs> I don't know what happened, I don't know what, I, I, I don't know what happened, but I, between 7 and 9 a.m., I had gone to the bathroom like five times, and I had to give a three-day retreat. What did I do? I laid hands on myself, amen, and, then, and I took authority. I did not own this. In the name of Jesus, this diarrhea does not belong to me. I kick you out of my intestines. Get out right now in Jesus' mighty name. And then I started to use, I used the authority. I stood on the word of God. Lord, you have commanded us to go heal the sick. Mark 16, verse 18. I'm healing my, I'm, I'm placing my hands over this problem here. And I release the healing of the kingdom of God. In faith, I thank you that I'll be able to do this retreat healthy. And I was praying in the Spirit, and you know what? In faith, I showed up and I, before the people, and I gave that retreat, and I was fine the rest of the time. Amen? We need to learn how to do these things. Hallelujah. We need to learn how to do these things. So those five points will help you. They're simple, but it's about revelation. Amen? We don't own it. It's not ours. Then we use our authority. We stand on the Word of God. We keep thanking the Lord. We pray in the Spirit. I am not saying for you not to go to the doctor. Amen? Because the Lord heals through doctors too. As I said, on my mother's side, everybody was a doctor. I have a son that is a doctor. But the first thing you do is you run to Dr. Jesus. Amen? That's the first thing you do. And you start applying those principles when you have a headache. If, if you get a sore throat, immediately take action. Amen? Take action. Don't wait till, till it gets worse and worse and worse. The moment you start feeling something weird, take action. You get a pain in your knee, take action. You know what I'm saying? Keep yourself healthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, The healing is already there. Jesus paid for it at the cross. And there's many different ways in which we can receive it. Number one, there is healing in the Word of God. Let's go to Proverbs 4. 20 to 22. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Thank you, Jesus. The word, remember that the word of God is like a seed, and that seed contains healing. Hallelujah. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. In other words, show, so, show some effort. Incline your ear. Open yourself to the word of God. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their whole body. Okay? 
So the word of God itself is like medicine. Amen? You got to take that word of God, you take it like medicine. Hallelujah. So we find healing in the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I remember one time I was where in, um, in Tanzania, in Africa. I woke up with the worst sore throat. I felt like if I had two potatoes in my throat, I couldn't even swallow. And uh, I didn't want to go to any hospital. <laughs> and, and seriously, I don't travel with any medicine, okay? <laughs> I didn't even have any asp nothing. So I stood on the word of God. Lord, your word says that by your wounds I have been healed. And then there is healing in the Eucharist also, because we are receiving Jesus. So that day that I felt so bad, we had mass early in the morning. So I not only stood on the word of God, but I said, Jesus, when I receive you in the Eucharist, I am receiving the fullness of who you are, and there is healing in the Eucharist. And when I took the Eucharist, all the pain was gone, totally gone, supernaturally. Thank you. Amen. Hey, people, clap to the Lord. Come on. We, we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 6.1. The Holy Spirit is the helper. We cooperate, 2 Corinthians 6.1. We co-labor with the Holy Spirit. We cooperate with the Holy Spirit. He is the helper. That means that He helps us. There's something that we must do. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is healing in the Word of God. There is healing in the Eucharist. There is healing in praise and worship. People don't understand the power of praise and worship because Psalm 22 verse 3 says that the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. Another Bible translation says that our praises enthrone Him. In other words, we build Him a throne with our praises. And when King Jesus comes and He sits there, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. People start getting healed. Amen? I was in uh, New Zealand. Again, I had a sore throat that day. Not as bad as the one in Africa, but I had a sore throat. And I, I don't let these things, I do not own them. I do not accept them. And I kick them, you know, I, reach, I use my authority to kick it out. So I was, we were praising and worshiping the Lord. Praising and worshiping the Lord. And suddenly in front of me with a pot of honey and a spoon. And I realized he has come to heal me. The Lord has sent me to heal me. And in faith, I said, Lord, I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to take that honey by faith. And I opened my mouth like this. And you know what? I took that honey by faith and totally I was totally healed immediately. Amen. I could, I could give you testimonies until Jesus comes back of healings in the midst of praise and worship. But one testimony, this lady came to our conference, this was in Tanzania, and the thing is that in these nations, they really praise God. They really give the king the praise that he deserves, amen? In the West, people don't know how, seriously. <laughs> Anyways, that's another teaching. So... There's a lot of high praises uh, in, in this place, in Tanzania. And uh, a lady came with a picture of her husband because he couldn't come. He had cancer on his leg. And the doctor said that they would have to amputate the leg. And the lady came with a picture of her husband. And somebody in the team, after praise and worship, somebody prayed over that picture. And uh, that, this will happen on a Wednesday. On Friday, when they went to the doctor, the doctor looked at the leg and said, I do not have to amputate. This leg is getting healed. And he wasn't even there. Amen? It was just a picture that was there. Thank you, Lord. I could go on and on. So that's another way to receive healing in the time of praise and worship because the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. Another way of getting healed is by faith. 
Amen. Everything requires faith, but faith, and you, 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 you have to release that faith in the Lord. Okay? Faith that He's a healer. That is all included in all these uh, points. Okay? The faith that is needed. You, we release faith on the truth of the Word of God. Through the laying on of hands, you can receive healing. Amen? And if there's nobody around, you can lay hands on yourself. Hallelujah. And by the way, you're the best person many times to pray over yourself because you have authority. You have authority over your body. Amen? Another way to get healed is through the anointing of somebody else. Some people are anointed in certain areas and uh, you can lay hands on them and they get healed because the anointing that is on your life. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I've seen so many people, for example, healed of um, immune problems. I don't know why, through me, why immune problems. Another, back pains, <laughs> teeth and gums. Don't ask me why, but the Lord uses me like that in, in you know, many, many times. Okay, so these are ways, these are practical ways in everyday life that you can receive healing. Amen? So this is so important. Hallelujah. So we, there is healing in the Word of God. There is healing in the Eucharist. There is healing in praise and worship. There is healing in the laying on of hands. There is healing uh, through somebody else's anointing. Amen? And there is healing when you release faith. The faith, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? And let me tell you, in the kingdom, there is a, let, let, let's say in the kingdom, there is a law that you reap what you sow. And if you start releasing healing in your life and in other people's lives, you're going to receive healing too. Amen? So as I lay hands on people, to release healing, I'm, I'm receiving healing for me too. Amen? Because you reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So it's so important that as the people of God, you, you put these principles to, to practice. And you start doing these things. And you're going to see how your body becomes stronger. Your body becomes healthier. And, you know, you're a living testimony in your sphere of influence and you can lay hands on people and you're going to start seeing healings and miracles and signs and wonders because it's what God wants. Amen? This is normal Christian living to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and to demonstrate the power of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One Christmas, one Christmas, because I want to show you that these things are more caught than taught. You need to hang out with people that do these things. Because if you go back to your old friends that are totally lukewarm <laughs> and pure potatoes, you're not going to grow. You got to be, be wise. Choose friends that walk like this. You see what I'm saying? So that you can grow. One Christmas... I, I have nine grandkids, not seven, but anyway. Uh, one Christmas, I, I have this grandson that was rather fat because he loved to eat anyways. At Christmas Day, he's sitting on the floor doing nothing. I said, Bounce, what's wrong with you? Oh, my stomach hurts. I said, well, you know what? In the name of Jesus. All the other grandkids were watching. So I, I put my hand on his tummy. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I take out of you. I had to do it in a way that they would understand. I take this pain in your stomach right now in the name of Jesus. It's binding, right? I bind it. I take it. And now I throw it in the garbage. Does not belong to you. Be healed. And he says, it's gone. Like that. The pain was gone. Like that. He started to run around. <laughs> so a few weeks later... Uh, another granddaughter of mine, not the same, not a sister, but a cousin. Uh, my daughter-in-law gets sick, and she's in bed. And this granddaughter is about two and a half years old. She walks up to her mom, 
and says, are you sick? She, the mom says, yes. It doesn't belong to you. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to take this. I'm going to throw it in the garbage. At two years old, two and a half. So a Christian home that, that is alive in the spirit, this is normal. Fathers and mothers, we pray for one another. We pray for the children. We pray for the family members. You know what I'm saying? They need to grow up with this revelation. This is a truth that we need to, to take over. We need to appropriate the truth of the Word of God. Amen? So, hallelujah. So we're going to get up, and you're going to take authority over whatever you have been diagnosed, whatever it is. If you have nothing awesome, pray for the person next to you then. Help her. <laughs> So lift up your hands to heaven and say, in the name of Jesus, I do not own this problem. I do not own this disease. I do not own this sickness. I do not own this pain. This infirmity does not belong to me. Jesus took it at the cross. And now I use my authority and I kick it out of my body and I say, get out. Go back to the cross. And now I step all over you. Cancer, I step all over you. Arthritis, I step all over you. Whatever it is, high blood pressure, I step all over you. Problems with the bones, problems with the immune system. I step all over you right now. You don't belong in me. I step all over you. Get out. Now, start thanking the Lord. Lord, I thank you in faith. Because you are a healer. And you are my healer. And you want me well. Spirit, soul, and body. You want me healthy. You want me strong. Today I receive the anointing of Caleb and Joshua that at 85 years old, they were strong as if they were 40. Receive that anointing. Take over that anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Now place your hand where the problem is, wherever it is, and say, I am healed in Jesus' name. And pray in the Spirit. Keep praying in the Spirit. Come on. Take authority over every spirit of pain, infirmity, sickness, disease. You, all of you have got to go. Go to the feet of Jesus right now. Go to the feet of Jesus right now. Amen. Check yourselves. See how it is. That headache. The headache. How is it? It's gone. Why don't you thank the Lord? When you're checking for pain, you, you say, you, you start at uh, level number 10. 10 is the worst. And then after you pray, you check and see where that level has gone. You want it to go down to zero, okay? Sometimes it goes down to five, four, three, two, one, and then it leaves, okay? There was a man in Poland that had buzzing in his ear. 14 years buzzing in his ear. It happened when he fell off a motorcycle. I think there's somebody that has buzzing in your ear here. It needs to go, that buzzing needs to leave, to leave you. Anyways, 14 years with that thing going on. And uh, he was sitting on a chair and we started taking authority over that buzzing. And, um, and I said, from 10, to zero, where is that buzzing now? Says it's gone down to six. Say we keep taking authority. It it's gone down to four. 
It's gone down to zero. 14 years with that busing, it went down to zero. Amen? So we persevere. We persevere. Amen? Taking authority and knowing that it has to go down to zero. Many times where there is a stubborn pain that doesn't leave, ask the Holy Spirit, why is it not leaving completely? Okay? I was praying for a worship leader in Tanzania. She was filled with pain from her right side, and the pain would only go down to five. It would not move down. And I asked the Holy Spirit, what is wrong? She needs to forgive. Once she forgave, that pain went down to zero. It left completely. So you have to, uh, the Holy Spirit will show you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Okay, anybody else with a testimony? To what level has the pain gone? Anybody? Anybody that had pain? Any of you had pain? Okay. Huh? You had hip pain? Yes, I had hip pain. It's gone? It's gone. Hip pain is gone. Anybody with uh, pain level at five? Neck pain is uh, like at five? It's lower than five now. So say, in the name of Jesus, keep your hand there. In the name of Jesus, all of this pain needs to leave now. I bind you now. Bind you. I kick you out. I do not accept you. Out. In Jesus' name. Pray. Check it out now. Check it out. It's gone. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, I, I, I'm sharing with you ways to, you know, receive your inheritance of healing and what to do if you start getting pains and if you start getting sick, you take authority right away. What, you know, don't own it. Take authority right away. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if it's a cancer. It doesn't matter if it's a broken bone. It doesn't matter if it's a headache. God heals everything. Amen. He heals everything. And I have a friend that has already raised seven people from the dead, okay? Because Jesus says to go and raise the dead. This guy already has raised seven persons from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I want all of you to check your bodies, see if the pain has left, and I want to take a few testimonies. Be courageous. <laughs> We are family. The, the testimonies are to give glory to God. Amen? It can be very short. I came with a pain in my head, and now it's gone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody? Come on. Quickly. Thank you, Jesus. I have to share. Come. It's today. Today. Yeah. It's what the Lord has done today. I mean, I've seen her touch her neck, and I mean... Then I looked around. There was like 20 other of us going while she was touching her neck. We were touching ours. But mine was uh, bad because I couldn't go down and up like that real fast. And when she said five, I took that five. And then when we just did it again, I took more. And now it's like a three. But, but you've you got to stay with it. I know from experience you've got to stay with it. And I don't like pain in my neck. I mean, who does? But So in the name of Jesus, we bind that pain and we ah, take it out. does not belong to you. Receive your healing. There's a great power in testimony. When somebody gives a testimony, the Holy Spirit does it again. You just need to have faith to receive it. I, I mean, in Poland, in one uh, meeting, so many tumors were gone and disappeared and there was one woman sitting and she came up to say I had that tumor 
And when that other lady came and said the tumor in the breast disappeared, my tumor disappeared. Amen. How is the pain now? So much better. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, people. Give God glory. You, you have spent from 11 to, it's 2.15. You're going to go back home. They're going to ask you, what happened? Nothing. No. Come on. Give glory to God. What did the Lord do today? Did you have a change of mind? Is the depression gone? Is the pain gone? Do you have hope for the future? Come on. Something has, has, has had to happen. Huh? Today, in this place, today. Come to the front and give the testimony. Even if you are experiencing an improvement, that's the testimony. I've been, I, I've been complaining about my knee for the last couple days at the healing services. And today when I came in here, it was acting up like about a five. And now it feels like about a two. And I'm trying to get it out completely in the name of Jesus. I hope he healed my high blood pressure. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll take two more. There was a headache, neck pain, two necks, knee. Come on. Something else? Thank you, Jesus. We got to give gl God glory. Hi, everyone. Um, today I heard the voice of God, and I know now what I'm supposed to do with my life. Amen. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is wonderful. Hallelujah. She knows what to do with her life. Hallelujah. That is a big one. He's Cuban, too. <laughs> I like to say that uh, sometimes we have a treasure and we forget that we really have a treasure. And we need to think that when Jesus was getting ready to go to the Father, he said to his apostles, I am leaving and that is better for you because if I don't leave, you will not receive the Holy Spirit. Are we aware of that treasure that we have so may all of us live here, recognize, more aware, what a gift we have. Jesus had to come. He had to die. He had to be buried. He had to resurrect, go back to the Father in order to send the Holy Spirit. Amen? So what did the Lord do today? I want to let everyone know that God is our Savior, and if you believe in Him, that everything will be added unto you. As you said, seek first the kingdom of God, and everything will be added unto you. Pray to Him with faith, and He can heal you, He can touch you. And that is my belief, and I have experienced that in my life, that God is my Savior, and everything is possible through Him who strengthens me. What did He do today? I feel so happy and I, I want to be part of the team. And I really feel happy and I, I regret that I didn't invite my friends for this session. Amen. So she's happy. She has joy. Who needs joy? Well, receive it. Come on. Lift up your arms to heaven. Let the oil of gladness come upon all of us. You open up. Receive the joy of the Lord. The oil of God, you're full of joy. What do you feel? I feel joy and love. Joy and love, hallelujah. Her face has changed. Thank you, Lord. I was depressed and I didn't know I was depressed. She was depressed and now she feels? Joy. Joy, joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I want to give you another, uh, another point to keep our healing. Proverbs 17, verse 22, laughter is medicine to our bodies. Amen? That's why the devil wants to keep the people of God sad and depressed. 
because that depletes your immune system. But joy, joy increases your, your, your health in your immune system. You have a testimony? So I came here thinking I'd rather be dead, but uh, I've got hope now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So everybody, just lift up your hands to heaven. Come on. We are, you want to say something? Um, I actually was in the hospital for a while because I wanted to commit suicide. And a couple days ago, I wonder, was this close to doing it again? But this time I was really serious. And but now you want to live? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You have a testimony? I'm looking for testimony. Huh? I'm looking for testimony. Any testimony? Okay. So now we're going to thank the Lord and we're going to close and we can pray individually. Some people want prayers for their families. We're going to pray now. Lift up your hands to heaven. Father, we thank you because you're good. Daddy, you are good all the time. You are good and you're good all the time. And you have amazing plans for our lives. We thank you for the rescue that took place in our lives where you searched for us and you took us out of darkness and brought us into your light. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the power of your blood this morning. We thank you because your blood forgives. Your blood has redeemed us. Your blood cleanses. Your blood justifies. Your blood sanctifies. We thank you for the power of your blood. Jesus, you are faithful. You are loyal to us. You are so good to us. You are reliable. You are dependable. You are always there, Holy Spirit. You are our helper. You never take a break, oh God. You are on call 24-7, God. We thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. We thank you today because by your wounds we have been healed. We don't have to stay sick. You took that sickness on the cross. We thank you, Lord, for the lifter of our shame. You are our glory. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to experience abundance. We thank you, Lord, that we have been adopted into your family as sons and daughters. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory for the healing of our broken hearts, God. We thank you, Lord. Right now, we lift up our families. We pray for the ones that do not know Jesus. We stand on your word that salvation is us for us and our households. Acts 16, verse 31. We thank you, Lord, for our families. We decree and declare healing for our, the members of our family that are sick. We stand on Psalm 107, verse 20. You sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. For those looking for jobs, Lord, let there be jobs available. Thank you, Lord. For those who are addicted to alcohol, to drugs, to pornography, to whatever, gambling, any kind of addiction, we decree and declare those chains are broken in Jesus' mighty name. Broken in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our families. We thank you, Lord, for our families. We bless the married couples here today. We bless those married couples here today. And we decree and declare that they bless one another, that they are one in the spirit, that they honor and respect one another, that they love each other, that they stay true. And we decree and declare that what God has joined, no man will separate in the mighty name of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Anoint us, Lord, with the oil of gladness like never before, Lord God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to turn to your neighbor and to bless that person next to you. Learn how to bless 
with your tongue, with your spoken words. Bless, bless one another. Bless with the word of God. Bless them with joy. Bless them with the peace of God. You need to learn to bless. Bless, bless. Thank you, Lord. Bless them with the blessings of Abraham. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Learn to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, okay. Let's give the Lord a mighty shout. One, two, three. Whoa! Thank you, Lord. There's been questions about Maria's books. Um, they, she has many books, but you have to go to the publishing company. There's ten, and all of them are different, and they all do what the front says it, it does. If it's an arrow, the arrow shoots right to the, the problem. The power in your tongue is not about speaking in tongues. It's about so very important about what we, what we say. Everything that we say is so very important. All the gates, her eye gates, her, you know, there's a book on the gates, how important it is. You can't get it on Amazon. I'm wrong. You can't go to Amazon. You have to go to the publishing company, Queenship Publishing Company. It's called Queenship, and they'll have all the books there for you to order. Another thing that you would might be interested in is she has an hour of power uh, in Spanish on sa uh, Saturday night at 8 o'clock, I'm sorry, 7.30, and then she has one in English on Monday night at 8 to 9 that a lot of people here has been, um, which you got to realize it's Eastern Standard Time. I'm sorry, we're in Arizona. So it's three hour, 5 o'clock every Monday night. Okay, and there you get to it by going to Maria Vidia at official Facebook. And then it'll be on Facebook. Also, those Hour of Powers, if you miss it, you can go back in here. Because now when we leave, that's some food you have. You can get more nourishment that way. We also offer two um, ministries. Or it's one ministry called Days of Glory, but we have two events every year. One is in July, one's in November. They're always in Boston. And the information is on our website, daysofglory.org. One is called the School of the Holy Spirit. That's a whole week of uh, classes and uh, about uh, prophetic uh, freedom in Christ, deliverance, and people, a lot of praise and worship. So there's a little postcard that if you take a picture, it takes you to the website. So those are just things that you may be able to um, uh, would be able to help you in your journey with Jesus. Okay. Um, while I speak, you, we, we're going to pass a basket around if uh, you would like to make a free will offering to Maria. Um, and this money will be given directly to her. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Maria. I don't know um, about you, but I could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, and I was in tears um, as I could see the Holy Spirit work. Did you feel that? That was amazing. Um, thank you so much for being here and uh, for sharing this beautiful gift that God has given you with us, and we hope to see you again. <laughs> um, on behalf of Father Dan and our parish community, um, thank you all for being here and um, for all your love in the sharing and this beautiful morning that we had together. Um, there are still snacks and water if you need to grab one on your way out. Okay, thank you. And George, thank you, George. He's awesome. We get him every week. He's awesome. <laughs>